For growing famine and ongoing conflicts in African countries are prompting the United Nations to warn that the world is facing the biggest humanitarian crisis since the end of World War II. 20 million people, 20 million people in the region, specifically in South Sudan, Yemen, Somalia and Nigeria are at risk of starvation. Fred Malin, the program manager for the organization Geneva Call, joins me now from Geneva, Switzerland. Good to see you, Fred. Hello. All right, the group you work for, Geneva Call, looks to take preventive measures to combat humanitarian violence before it hits. What type of actions are you taking right now in these African countries? Yeah, the, the, the situation in the <clears throat> regions, you name it, is quite critical, as you said. But uh, we are much working in, uh, in terms of protection, much more than in terms of assistance, humanitarian assistance. We do try to engage uh, armed non-state actors usually fighting against their government to respect the IHL, what we call international humanitarian <clears throat> law, being more commonly called uh, law of war. And uh, in engaging these numerous uh, armed non state actors, we try to improve the, 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 the life and the condition of the civilian population. Now, Fred, uh, it's clear as we look at these pictures here that things could get worse this year in large part because of persistent fighting and weak economy. Uh, exactly how dire is the situation becoming? Well, uh, depending on the context, you have many aspects on, uh, on this. Uh, uh, of course, we hear about the starvation, which is critically touching South Sudan, Somalia and Nigeria at the, at the moment as uh, working in uh, Africa. I wouldn't go too much on Yemen, which is for me a bit more Middle East context, even if it's very near from Africa. In any case, starvation is the, is the worst one, but uh, along the, this you have a, a massive displacement occurring with civilian population escaping the fighting and the drought, by the way, at the same time, or the place where the food, even if it's not dry, where the food is not reaching the place because of the roads are cut or, or because of logistical access. So. In, in many terms, this situation are critical in all ways, <laughs> we're going to say. And by the way, this quite uh, weak population are subject to many, many uh, harassment from either their own government or e e even through the armed and state actors. It's where we, we can, we try to act at least. Now, Fred, I know you're in the thick of it all. Uh, what kind of conversations are you having, uh, you and your team having with armed forces there in that region? Okay, first we work exclusively with uh, armed and state actors. We do inform the governments where we worked, but it's a question of transparency. But uh, United Nations and big uh, ICRC bodies or other are taking care of government, I would say. So what we try to do is to contact them, to connect with them. Sometimes it's not possible. I, I would think about uh, Boko Haram or other movements quite extremist. And we try to sensitize them with the benefits they could have in respecting the IHL, the law of war, and respecting their population. Uh, then we inform us, but also we, we teach them what, what is the law, exact law, the international law, because sometimes they think they are in their country and they are not bound by respecting the, such a kind of law. And then uh, when it's successful, uh, we try to make them to change their behavior. In the field, I have a, another example, which is not named in, in your report, it's uh, GRC Congo where in the east of Congo you have uh, at least 50 to 60 armed um, state actors with many uh, violations of human rights, uh, international human rights occur occurring. And then we try to change the behavior in the field, which is uh, the most important. I had a final question for you. The U.S. is a leading contributor to foreign aid. In fact, they gave $2 billion last year uh, to the U.N. there. Uh, but leaders here are talking about scaling back. Uh, does that type of policy talk concern organizations such as yours? Well, I cannot really answer such a que kind of question. You know, it's difficult to know if it's, there is enough or not enough money. As far as I know, we are desperately looking for fundings, more fundings, because what we do, it's uh, 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 what we call the, the top of the iceberg, because uh, uh, many more protection and sensitization into protection is needed. So it's quite easy to say the money is given for nothing, but 
if it was not given, it was the situation could be worse. So um, I I wonder who can answer such a kind of question. But funding is desperately needing if we want to avoid this situation and obviously the rest of the situation because these people want to escape their continent to another continent. This is quite clear. Yeah, one thing for sure is that the people there uh, need help. Uh, Fred Malin, thank you so much. We are hoping for the best for uh, the Welcome. people there in dire need and also your organization that continues to give back and help. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Thank you. All right.